everything's beginning to swing in a quiet, cool, warm way. My baby didn't say anything. Just looked at me with that special look my baby has. Years ago, uh, on the first album, there was a, a cut. They did a thing called My Baby. And Fred Astaire, uh, with Barry Chase, danced to it. They called me up. I went out to Hollywood, met all the people out there. And all I had to do was to take a bow. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was wonderful meeting Astaire. He, he's exactly what uh, you see, a, a shy, mannerly, brilliant, great dancer. I was talking to Tom about this movie that nobody wants me to make. I came over and we just goofed around in the studio, you know, I did a little uh, kind of a dialogue back and forth, kind of an improvised uh, free associating. He's like a stand-up uh, comic and he's also like a poet and, uh, you know, and like a philosopher and a, you just try to keep up with him. You know? well, Tom, you made me feel a lot better. <laughs> Thanks. I, seriously, I, I thought no one would care. But thanks. I'm there for you, Ken. I think Laurie Anderson is an extraordinary talent. And she was the curator of a, a thing called the Meltdown. And, and I did three shows with her and one of my own at the Royal Festival Hall in London. And uh, so in one of them that, that I did with her, I was God, and she was asking me questions, you know, which we'd worked out. She'd ask me, now, do you, do you ever get lonely? And, I, and I'd, as God, I'd say, no, no, uh, there's too much to do. I've got everything on autopilot anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. He's a fearless performer. I mean, we're in this Royal Festival Hall, which is a, you know, 3,000-seat hall in, in London, and we decided to literally take phone calls during the concert. And Ken started, hello, this is Ken. I love him for that. You know, he's like, he's got a very, very lovely, well-developed, easygoing ego. We found out that Ken was going to be in London. We were doing a radio show at the time, Solid Steel, and we decided to get Ken in for an interview. And at the end, I said, you know, are you up for doing a... A collaboration and he said yeah sure you know send me the record send make it make a tune and send it to me and I'll and I'll send you some stories and do a vocal and that's really how it happened. An aging young rebel called what's his name wanted to be different well he stayed the same. I think he's definitely uh, evolved you know in a very kind of strange way he's he's gotten much more uh, interior and philosophical you know i think he's gotten uh, more poetic as he's gotten older you know he just goes inside of his own head there's a place i go cliche heaven in heaven i go there every night yeah. as i drift off to sleep and I hear the voices tell me, like it or not, cookies do crumble. Yeah, they do. I thought, gee, it would be great if we could have something that would be so abstract, the way the imagination is abstract, the way dreams are abstract, that would be an image that we could lay in with the track. And that's what I'm working on now, because there, there is a, programs to manipulate images that you can do unbelievable things with. To me, it's too bad that we can't put uh, electrodes on our dreams and, and record them so that you'd wake up in the morning and there you'd have a little DVD of your dreams at, at, from that night. Instead of having them fade right away into the dream that we're always in when we're wide awake. He's like the voice in your dreams, or, you know, it's something that's, uh, um, it doesn't require anything else. And that's what makes it interesting. Mm. You don't require seeing him. He puts it all in the voice, puts the smile and the snarl and 
the mystery and the question marks and all that stuff. It's all in the voice. So it's, it's not like you say, gee, I wish I could see him or meet him or I might understand him better if I was sitting near him. But, you know, that's his gift. In order to put myself to sleep at night, I, if I suffer from any insomnia, I do a, a thing called maybe the moment. And that's a rhythmic thing, too. For example, I was uh, thinking about God the other night. Um, and I thought, maybe, is there anything before God? So, hey, wait a minute, I'll write, maybe the moment is older than God. Now, I got that much done. I'm lying in the bed, older than God. Maybe the moment's older than God. And weighs twice as much. Yeah, there. So I have three lines now. Maybe the moment is older than God and weighs twice as much. What's even more odd, before the Big Bang began to begin, and I'm very happy with that, before the Big Bang began to begin, who invented original sin? Now, I've got it. Maybe the moment is older than God and weighs twice as much. What's even more odd, before the Big Bang began to begin, guess who invented original sin? Satisfied with myself, I've written that down on a little pad next to the bed so I uh, won't forget it when you sleep. I go to sleep like a baby. Yeah. Insomnia is gone. <laughs> Who ever would have thought poetry is a cure for insomnia? <laughs> well, that's true. Some people go to sleep when they hear it. <laughs> now everyone loves the new blue. Because it's the truest. You will too. When you see this blue. True blue. Too true. True blue. Too true. That's it for the Word This Week. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can send any questions or comments to Word This Week feedback at booktelevision.com. I'm Rachel Giza. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Just kind of like experimenting, playing around. He's, uh, hey, Ken. Is Ken around? He's in there. <laughs> I just saw him. You're I'm going to tell, tell him the truth about you. My wife is the uh, vocal coach. Really? He's like the man behind the curtain. Or uh, like a priest. Uh, it's, it's interesting that I was listening to... Uh, I don't know if you're like a priest, really, Ken. I, uh, I can I go back on that? <laughs>